In 2022, 80s superstar Kate Bush experienced a remarkable and very much unexpected career resurgence, all thanks to her 1985 song Running Up That Hill and its extensive use in the Netflix series Stranger Things. Running Up That Hill has had the most extraordinary story, dominating charts around the world, bettering its original performance in most countries and helping Kate to reach new audiences. Running Up That Hill has become Bush's most popular track on Spotify and in June 2022 it became the most streamed song on the platform. At the time of recording the song has gone to number one in the UK, Australia, Belgium, Ireland, Lithuania, Luxembourg, New Zealand, Sweden and Switzerland. It's also become her first top 10 hit in America. And with the huge surge of interest in her music and Kate remaining a mysterious figure for the most part, there are so many questions being asked about all things Kate. So when was the song written? What was Kate's inspiration for the track? What are the key facts about the video? Why was it chosen for series 4 of Stranger Things? So many questions, let's find out. Kate had grown tired of city living and decided to move from London to the Kent countryside before recording began on what was to become her fifth studio album, Hounds of Love. She also had her very own recording studio built in a barn behind her family home in East Wickham in Kent. The new studio was a 48 track professional recording facility and allowed Kate to create and experiment at her own pace without having to worry about clocking up lots of expensive recording time in London studios. Running Up That Hill was the first song to be written for the album in the summer of 83 and recording for the album began in January 84. The song is written in the key of C minor which is apparently highly unusual for a pop song. Her boyfriend at the time Del Palmer played bass on the track and her brother Paddy Bush played the balalaika. A new synthesizer called the Fairlight CMI Series 2 was also used on the song. It had first been introduced in 1979 and Kate's friend Peter Gabriel had been the first owner of it in the UK but Kate was the first artist to use it on an album Never Forever in 1980. Kate is also the song's sole writer and producer which is especially noteworthy when you consider how most modern pop songs are written and produced by enough people to make up a small village. Kate has spoken in many interviews about how the song is essentially about a man and a woman in a romantic relationship who are struggling to understand each other because of their respective genders. So Kate Kate had the idea of making a deal with God so they can both swap places and experience things from the other's perspective. In Rob Yanovic's biography of the superstar, Kate spoke about her initial lyrical ideas for the chorus. I thought a deal with the devil. Then I thought, well, no, why not a deal with God? Because in a way, it's so much more powerful, the whole idea of asking God to make a deal with you. As with most songs, they are, of course, open to interpretation. And it's interesting that the song was chosen for Stranger Things. Because it helps the character of Max to cope with the loss of her stepbrother Billy. Nora Felder, the music supervisor for the show, told the US media, I think it struck a chord for so many people because it really touches on the alienation and emotional struggle that so many of us go through at one point or another in life, especially as teenagers. Running Up That Hill is an actual fact, not the song's original title. Kate had initially named the song A Deal With God, but in 1985, EMI executives believed that a song with God in the title would mean many countries refusing to play it. In light of her last album, The Dreaming, not living up to commercial expectations, expectations, Kate relented and allowed EMI to change the title track to Running Up That Hill. Although on Hounds of Love, the track is followed by Deal With God in brackets. In 1992, in an interview on BBC Radio 1, Kate spoke about the situation. We were told that if we kept this title that it wouldn't be played in any of the religious countries. Italy, France, Australia, Ireland wouldn't play it and that generally we might get it blacked purely because it had God in the title. This seemed completely ridiculous to me me and the title was such a part of the song's entity. But nonetheless, although I was very unhappy about it, I felt unless I compromised that I was going to be cutting my own throat. I just spent two, three years making an album and we weren't going to get this record played on the radio if I was stubborn. So I felt I had to be grown up about this, so we changed it to Running Up That Hill. When Kate handed in the finished album to EMI in the summer of 1985, 
Record executives wanted Cloud Busting to be the first single, but Kate felt very strongly it should be Running Up That Hill. Kate refused to back down and Running Up That Hill became the lead single from Hounds of Love, which is widely considered to be the commercial and critical apex of Kate's career. The song itself was released on August 5th, 1985, and Kate appeared on the British chat show Wogan on that very day to promote it. She also did an appearance on British chart show Top of the Pops. It entered the British charts at number nine and eventually climbed to number three, becoming her biggest hit in the UK since Wuthering Heights. Hounds of Love debuted at number one and was met with widespread acclaim. Running up that hill also helped Kate make some inroads into the American market by reaching number 30 over there. The album also reached number 30 in the country. And with the huge success of the song and album, Kate was finally afforded the creative freedom she had long... Oh, and with the huge success of the song and album, Kate was finally afforded the creative freedom, free from record company interference, she had long hoped for. In an interview with Melody Maker in the late 1980s, she commented, They left me alone from that point, it shut them up. The Running Up That Hill video was filmed at Bray Studios in Berkshire in April 85 and directed by David Garfa, who had mostly done camera work in TV and film before. David didn't go on to direct more music videos after Running Up That Hill, strangely enough, and a quick look at his IDMB page shows more director credits for Tesco commercials and also more camera work jobs. Kate had wanted an interpretive dance style for the video. She had spoken in interviews about how the choreography and most videos at the time was being used in quite a trivial way. It was being exploited, haphazard images, without really the serious expression and wonderful expression that dance can give. So we felt how interesting it would be to make a very simple routine between two people, almost classic and very simply filmed. So that's what we try to do, a serious piece of dance. Michael Hervieu, Kate's dance partner in the video, was given just one day to rehearse and three days to film the video. They were both dressed in matching grey Japanese hakamas and the routine was choreographed by a Diane Gray. The choreography also featured a repeated drawing of a bow and arrow gesture, an image of which was also used on the single cover. MTV surprisingly chose not to play the video at the time because they found the whole thing to be too abstract. MTV execs preferred videos where artists lip sync to the song, which Kate does not do, of course, in the Running Up That Hill video. So instead, they played Kate's performance of the song from the Terry Wogan show. Even before Running Up That Hill's 2022 revival, the song had enjoyed a very long life. It became the main theme tune for the 1986 children's drama series Running Scared and was featured on the Chocolate War soundtrack in 1988. The song has been covered by many artists including Placebo, Meg Myers, Will Young, Tori Amos, Kiki D, Little Boots, Chromatics and even 1980s teen queen Tiffany. Running Up That Hill was played at the 2012 London Olympics and to coincide with the occasion, Kate released a 2012 remix of the song. The song was also featured in the pilot episode of Pose in 2018, which is incidentally how I discovered it for the first time. Upon reaching number one in the UK in June 2022, Kate broke three chart records. The longest wait between number ones in the history of the chart. Her last number one was Wuthering Heights in 1978. The longest time taken between a song's release and it reaching number one, which is 37 years since Running Up That Hill came out. And the oldest female artist to reach number one, breaking Cher's record who topped the UK charts in 1998 when she was 52 with her monster smash Believe. Cher graciously conceded the title to Kate by posting a tweet congratulating her on her achievement. Bravo Kate, records are meant to be broken. Remember back in the day when women had short sell by dates? We had to fight our way through the testosterone curtain and we did it so the girls who came after us could sing as long as they wanted. With mega respect, me. It was certified for sales of a quarter of a million physical copies in 1985. And since 2004, it has racked up digital sales of 600,000. And with sales continuing to grow, it could become a UK million seller in the near future. 
According to the BBC, running up that hill has earned Kate a million pounds in royalties in May and June 2022, as she owns all of the publishing rights for the song. In June 2022, Kate had this to say about the extraordinary success of the song in a rare post on her official website. The Duffer brothers have created four extraordinary series of Stranger Things, in which the child actors have grown into young adults. In this latest series, the characters are facing many of the same challenges that exist in reality right now. I believe the Duffer brothers have touched people's hearts in a special way at a time that's incredibly difficult for everyone, especially younger people. By featuring Running Up That Hill in such a positive light as a talisman for Max, one of the main female characters, the song has been brought into the emotional arena of her story. Fear, conflict and the power of love are all around her and her friends. I salute the Duffer brothers for their courage, taking this new series into a much more adult and darker place. I want to thank them for bringing the song into so many people's lives. I'm overwhelmed by the scale of affection and support the song is receiving and it's all happening really fast. As if it's being driven along by a kind of elemental force. I have to admit I feel really moved by it all. Thank you so very much for making the song a number one in such an unexpected way. In June 2022, Kate also gave a rare interview on BBC Radio 4's Woman Hour. Bush said that the chart feat was just extraordinary and quite shocking. She also added, It's such a great series, I thought that the track would get some attention, but I just never imagined that it would be anything like this. The Duffer Brothers created the series and actually we watched it from the first series onwards. So I was already familiar with the series. And I thought what a lovely way for the song to be used in such a positive way. You know, as a kind of talisman almost really for Max. And I think it's very touching actually. Stranger Things is of course a sci-fi series set in the 80s. It is now in its fourth series on Netflix. It was music supervisor Nora Felder who was tasked with finding the right song to reflect the intense pain the character of Max was experiencing. And she soon hit upon an old favourite of hers from the 80s. It immediately struck me with its deep chords of the possible connection to Max's emotional struggles and took on more significance as Bush's song marinated in my conscious awareness. Nora admits to having a few other options but running up that hill was always her top choice. Kate rarely approves her music to be used on TV shows, but luckily she said yes to Stranger Things as she was already a fan. Nora worked closely with Kate's publishers to secure the rights of the song, and Kate then personally approved every single use of the song in Stranger Things. As Felder explained to Variety magazine in 2022, Kate Bush's lyrics can mean very different things to different people. In Max's situation, the need for a deal with God can perhaps be metaphorically understood as a desperate cry for love, to manifest the extraordinary understanding and support Max needed while feeling so painfully alone. The remarkable thing about running up that hill is how well it has aged, and in my... <coughs> The remarkable thing about running up that hill is how well it has aged and in my humble opinion it actually sounds as if it could be released today by some super talented left field pop artist. While Stranger Things may be a huge platform to showcase music, plenty of other songs have also been given similar platforms but not reached the level of success that running up that hill has experienced. Kate's recent revival is also testament to the quality of her songwriting and her incredible talent. It also helped Kate to cement her status as one of the true all-time great musicians. Many believe, myself included, that how long a song lives on after its initial release, how well it weathers changing trends and connects with younger audiences as the years pass, is the real test for any song. If this is the case, well then running up that hill has definitely passed with flying colours. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts on anything in this video, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos.